I've been wearing and testing this MSR Explorer gear for a full year now. I wore it all the way from Cabo San Lucas up the Baja Peninsula in Mexico to San Diego. I wore it from here, my home in Oregon, all the way to northern Vancouver Island. I've put thousands of miles on it in all kinds of conditions, including up in the snow. It passed the snow angel test. And now that it's back in stock, I figure it's a good time to do an updated review. Can gear this budget friendly, relatively speaking, actually last? Yeah. Yeah, it can. So what is the MSR gear? Well, MSR stands for Malcolm Smith Racing. It is named after the legend himself, Malcolm Smith, that is a brand that has been acquired by Rocky Mountain. They are Rocky Mountain ATV MC house brand now. They make this Explorer gear, they make the Voyager gear, which I also like. They make a helmet now, the Expedition helmet, they make boots, they make mid-layers, they make everything basically head to toe now that you could want for adventure or dual sport riding. Their goal with this gear was to deliver high-end quality comparable to your climbs, your revets, at a more affordable price. You'll remember that I felt like they mostly achieved that goal in my initial review, which I can link for you. This is a feature-rich outer shell, aka no zip and liners, anything like that, with integrated armor. Let me give you a quick overview of the gear in case you're not familiar with it, and then we'll talk about my experiences with it. The Explorer has 630 denier overlays in the seat cuff and inside the bottom hem, aka your slide areas. It has super fabric ceramic overlays in the shoulders and elbows for wear protection and abrasion resistance. I don't know if you can see it, but it's these little ceramic dots that are supposed to make it stand up even better than just the fabric in a crash. It has removable D3O CE level one back, shoulder, elbow, knee, and hip armor. And the whole thing is kept waterproof by by the Event three layer main body fabric, which has a 30,000 millimeter water column rating and very high breathability. It has water resistant YKK zippers, a comfortable mesh liner, multiple direct vents, eight vents on the jacket and four on the pants. The jacket has a hydration pack pocket, so you don't have to wear a backpack if you want to carry hydration with you. It has a ton of adjustability, waist, forearms, legs, etc. As leather knee panels on the pants and the MSRP is $419.99 for the jacket and the pants are $359.99, which is $700. $180 total for jacket and pants, which is not cheap. But when you consider that is just slightly more expensive than the Klein Carlsbad jacket itself, and the quality is comparable, it is a hell of a bargain. This is not entry level gear. This is not, I think I'm getting into dual sport riding, I'm just gonna go out and buy this stuff. It isn't. This is, I ride all the time, I know I'm gonna get a ton of use and a lot of miles out of my gear and I need something that's gonna be good that isn't crazy expensive. That's what this stuff is. It is high end gear, it is not entry level gear. So don't hear me saying almost $800 is cheap. It isn't, but it is inexpensive compared to the direct competitors of this gear. So if you don't wanna buy climb, but you want climb quality, I would encourage you to give this stuff a look. There were some small but significant annoyances with the original version of this gear, which is what I'm wearing right now. They sent me the updated version, which I've had a chance to go out and test and ride in. There were a ton of refinements, and I, you know, I'll put the full list on the screen quickly if you wanna pause and look at it, but most significantly, they fixed the elbow kind of stiffness issue where it felt like it was jabbing you in the elbow all the time. That was a big one that people were complaining about. Overall, the jacket's just even better than it was. Uh, they took a good product and made it slightly better, and I think that really speaks to their willingness to listen to rider feedback and uh, both the feedback from those of us who reviewed it, who pointed out the same things that were issues, but also customer reviews and all of that. They still don't have a zipper between the jacket and the pants, which is stupid to me, but I guess I'm the only one that cares about that. I don't know. Let me just run you through all the places and conditions I've used this gear in. I literally have thousands of miles on it. I spent a week riding from Baja to San Diego, wearing it every day. It was 80 plus degrees the first day, that's Fahrenheit through the desert. I even crashed wearing it a few times. Later in the year, I spent four days straight riding up to BC and then immediately turning around and coming back after Travis broke his leg. It was 80 on the way up on that trip and raining and cold on the way back. It kept me warm and dry even in the downpour we hit when we first left camp. Basically anytime it's been below 80 degrees I've thrown this gear on. It's become my go-to setup anytime I might potentially see weather. So if I know it's gonna rain or it might rain, this is the gear I've been wearing for the last year. So how is it held up? Well, I scoured the jacket and the pants looking for signs of wear, for anything that I could show you to indicate where it had worn out or a failure point, and all I could find was some fraying on the edges of the pockets and on maybe the bottom edge of the jacket. Coincidentally, that's one of the things they fix with their refinements. Probably not coincidentally. There's no visible wear in the high wear areas, no wear where my suspenders clamp down and slide, zippers and snaps 
snaps are all still smooth and the stitching all looks good. So what don't I like about it after a year? Well, the elbows are still stiff, although it's loosened some. Again, they fixed that with the new version, so bravo, Rocky Mountain. I still hate that there's no zipper between the jacket and the pants. Not a fan of the crotch gusset. It's not lightweight, but it's no heavier than the other comparable jackets that I've worn. It's just not light. If you're gonna wear it in colder weather, you need to buy a separate mid-layer to keep you warm. That's true of all outer shells like this. Honestly, I prefer that to a zip-in liner, but it is technically a con because you need to buy more stuff. The jacket and pants are not super great when it's super hot. They're not supposed to be. They're not like mesh, but they have a lot of good ventilation if you get caught out in hotter weather than you're expecting. But if I was going out for multiple 90 degree days, this is not the jacket I would wear. Positives. After a year of wearing this gear, I've worn it in all kinds of weather, snow, rain, etc., hail, never gotten wet. The direct venting, that is there's no inner liner preventing the airflow from getting to your body. It's just a mesh liner for comfort, but there's no like layer of anything between you and the airflow is great. And it does make the jacket comfortable up to about 80 degrees, slightly uncomfortable up to about 90 and probably not wearable above that. The gear is comfortable and flexible, which is huge for me when I'm on the bike all day. I also love not dealing with zip in and out rain liners and warmth liners. This is my favorite setup, even when the conditions change. A good example of that is when we were riding back from BC, left camp, it was raining, I had my mid layer on, and we got down out of the mountains and it stopped. And I just pulled over, pulled my jacket off, took the mid layer off, stuffed it in my backpack, threw my jacket back on, didn't even hardly get wet underneath. I love the ability to do that quickly and easily and adapt to changing conditions, so it's been great for that. So after a year, and having tested both the original version and the updated version of this MSR gear, how do I feel about it? What's my final conclusion? It's just well-designed gear that you can tell was obviously designed by actual riders and has been refined even further by the feedback of actual riders. It's held up incredibly well. I've had zero leaks. The jacket and pants are very comfortable because it's flexible and also has a looser, more quote, American fit. It's comparable to climb in the way that it fits. It's not super tight like European gear is. You have room inside to move around and also so to layer up if need be. The fit is pretty solid, pretty right on. If you wear a 40 in jeans, get a 40 in this gear. If you're between sizes, go up. Also, uh, I wear a 2XL t-shirt and a 2XL jacket, so you can probably go with your t-shirt size. Again, if you're between sizes or whatever, if you're not sure, just size up. Rocky Mountain does have their fit guarantee where you can send things back one time for free uh, if it doesn't fit exactly like you like, so that's cool. So in my riding life, I feel like I need two sets of gear. One is a mesh or mesh-like gear for super warm weather that I wear all summer, anytime it's 80 plus. In the past, that's been my Climb Marrakesh. Probably this year, it's gonna be the Revit Tornado stuff that I got. My second set of gear is a waterproof shell that I can run in the cooler, wetter months, which here is nine months out of the year with varying mid and base layers. So when it's super cold, I go base layer and mid layer. When it's just kind of chilly, I'll just wear a mid layer. And when it starts to get warmer, 60, 70 degrees, I just run the jacket and pants, nothing underneath, obviously, except underwear and a t-shirt. Not free balling it in these, and I don't recommend that you do either. Maybe that's what the crotch gusset is for. Hmm, cheeky Rocky Mountain. This MSR gear has become my non-summer go-to. It has everything I want and nothing I don't. The one disadvantage is that it's not great in the heat. So if you're looking for a true four season setup, this isn't it. But those setups always come with compromises like fiddly liner swaps because they're not waterproof on their own. So you gotta zip in a waterproof liner. They have less ventilation for the hot summer, all of that stuff. So you can buy gear that's designed to work all year long. I prefer purpose-built stuff and swap it in the summer. That's just my philosophy. The setup does what it's designed to do and it does it well. It's inexpensive, waterproof protection that's good on and off the road and gives you the versatility to configure what you wear underneath to your personal preference. And the direct venting makes it comfortable even on warmer days. It has full D3O armor, including a back pad, which you usually have to pay extra for, even on super high-end jackets, so you gotta love that. And the super fabric overlays make me feel very confident it will stand up in a crash. I haven't crashed it on road, but I have crashed in the dirt a few times in it not a scuff on it. It wears like iron and feels like silk on the inside. Anyway, I realize this review is so positive that it stretches credibility, particularly on something that I got for free and that I do earn an affiliate commission on if you purchase using my links. But it's just really good for the price. I have yet to hear negative feedback or anyone say it was definitely not worth the money. I've heard tiny little complaints about the inside of the elbow, things like that, but I have not had a single person tell me, you steered me wrong, why the hell did you recommend this gear? It is just good. Go on their website and look at the reviews if you don't believe me. Don't take just my word for it. I always encourage you to not just do that. It's a hit. It's a it's an unqualified 
hit. It's very popular because it's good for the price that it is, and they can sell it cheaper because there's no middleman because they're the manufacturer and the retailer. So if you want to save money and get good quality buy it for life type gear, this stuff is definitely worth a look. And I would encourage you to check it out and I'll link it below if you want to. Now, if you want decent quality gear, more entry level gear at a lower price point, about half the price of this stuff, the MSR Voyager gear is also pretty good. It's just not as high end. It doesn't have as many features. The venting's not as good. It's not as comfortable. But if you're just trying to get into gear that isn't terrible and you want it to last and be comfortable and work well, that MSR Explorer stuff is good for a low price. So check that out. I got a full review of it too, which you can look at if you want to. Have you used the Explorer gear? How has your experience been? Either agree with me or disagree with me in the comments. Let people know that I was right all along or that I'm stupid and I'm a total corporate shill for trying to sell this crappy product to you, which I have never heard one time about this particular gear. Looking for more dual sport and adventure content, bike reviews, gear reviews, camping videos, things like that, please consider subscribing to the channel because I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you. Excellent! I didn't point. Am I cured? I thought I was at one point and then I wasn't again, so only time will tell.